dynamic 2D array allocation and deallocation. In the following example, we will allocate a 2D array which consists of three rows and eight columns. Okay, so this is our function for allocating a 2D array. Don't worry about any of the details of this at the moment because we're going to run through it with diagrams in great detail. Let's just look at how it's used for now. So if you've got this function ready and you want a 2D array, all you need to do is pass it the two dimensions of that 2D array. By convention, I'm going to say this is the number of rows and this is the number of columns. And then you assign the returned value to an int star star, a pointer to a pointer. Again, this will become clearer what this means when we run through the diagram, but that's just how you would use it. So from now on, we're going to focus on the machinations of this function. Okay, let's look at the first thing that happens in this function. We declare an int star star pointer. So this is a pointer to a pointer. Again, this will become clearer on the next slide. When we declare that, we've got one of these on the stack. So this isn't on the heap. This is a local variable in this function at this point. So that's all we've got up to now. Also now at this point, it's just pointing to a random place in memory. Remember that's what a pointer does. It points to a place in memory. Because it's not initialized, it's just pointing somewhere random. So if we try to access that memory, we'd run into trouble. We'd probably get a segmentation fault. Okay, so the next line is super important. We make a call to malloc, and that's saying memory allocate us, whatever the number is in here, in bytes. Now, what is that number? Well, we've got dim one times the size of an int star. Now, let's say an int star is eight bytes, and dim one is three, because we're gonna say that's the number of rows in the array that we're trying to allocate. This is gonna give us 24 bytes. So these blocks here represent those 24 bytes of memory, but there's just three blocks here, not 24. Why do you think that is? Well, the reason is that each one of these blocks represents a single int star, and we've got three of them. So we've allocated enough memory for three pointers to integers, and we're gonna use those in a moment to build up our array. Okay, so let's take a look here, int star star. Now you don't need to do this with malloc because you're assigning the return value of malloc to an int star star here. This is getting assigned to this. There's an implicit cast anyway, but I've added the int star star for readability. This is debatable and it's kind of dated syntax, but I think for the purposes of this diagram, I think it's useful personally. Okay, so after we've made the cast to an int star star, malloc returns a void star pointer. We've, we've mentioned that before. We assign that memory location that's been returned by malloc, this memory location here, to the value of IPP. And now you can think of IPP is now pointing at that memory, that newly allocated memory that's gonna be for our three pointers to integers. Okay, before diving into the detail of this statement here, let's think about what this for loop is doing at a high level. The plan is to iterate over each element of this new allocated array, and for each of the pointers to integers in it, we want to assign a new bit of memory that points to one of the rows of the array that we're trying to allocate. Now, as this develops, this will make more sense. Now let's look carefully at this statement. Memory allocate us dim two this time. So remember that's eight times the size of an int. Okay, so an int, let's say is four bytes. Dim two is eight. So we're gonna get four eights, we're gonna get 32 bytes. Okay, so where is that memory going to be allocated? Well, here it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we've got 32 bytes again, but each one of the elements is four bytes because we've asked for size of int chunks, if you like. So remember, in memory, we're just going to have 32 bytes, but I've represented them as eight separate elements because it makes sense in this context. Now recall that malloc will return the memory location of the first byte of the memory that is allocated for us, how much we've asked for. So that's here. So it's gonna return that, and I've cast that explicitly to an int star. And now this is the key bit, this where we make this assignment. So we've assigned IPPI, so we've used array notation here to assign the zeroth index here of this array of pointers to integers to that memory address. So we've made this assignment here. So the first element, or sorry, the zeroth element of this array is now pointing at that memory location. So now we've got one row done, if you like. We've allocated enough memory for eight integers. Yeah, so one row for our array. And the memory location of that, we've assigned to the zeroth index 
of this kind of stick of pointers, if you like. The zeroth index is now pointing at the beginning of that memory. So we go around the loop again. Now, i is 1. Remember on the previous slide, i was 0 and it was assigned to this portion of memory. Now i is 1. We've made another call to malloc. We've got another 8 elements for our array. We cast it to an int star pointer yet again, but this time we assign the location of that memory to the first index of this array of pointers. So we've got two rows done at this point. And we go around the loop again. So now i is 2. We make another call to malloc. We assign the memory location of that newly allocated 32 bytes or room for eight integers to the last index in this array of pointers. And we're done. We've got our three rows allocated. So this iteration is done. What happens next? So lastly, we return IPP. Now remember, that's just a number. That's just this memory location. And using that memory location in the parent function, which called malloc 2 d array, it will be able to follow these pointers to access all of the elements of this 2D array. And a critical thing to remember here is because we've used malloc, this memory has been allocated on the heap, so it will be persistent when this function returns. That's a really key point, you must remember that. Now recall, for every malloc, you're gonna need a free. And this is the wrong way to free memory, so make sure you don't do it this way. It says freeing memory incorrectly. So what do we do? We just say free IPPR. So that was a pointer to the 2D array that we got allocated for us by this function, but it goes wrong. And this diagram kind of shows you why it goes wrong. Just take a look at this, pause the video and think, well, what's the problem here? And then I'll explain it to you. Okay, did you get it? So the problem is when you call free on this pointer, it just frees what that pointer is directly pointing at. So all that, get, all that gets freed is the three int stars that were in that array. So you've got 24 bytes freed, but you've still got three times 32 left here. And that's a memory leak. And that can get expensive if that's happening in a loop and you're allocating loads of these arrays very quickly. Are you sure about that? That seems really inconvenient. Have you got any evidence that that's actually the case? I think it might just free all the memory. Actually, I do have evidence of that, and conveniently, it's on the next slide. Okay, so I ran that program with Valgrind, um, and you can see that we definitely lost 96 bytes in three blocks, which sounds a lot like three rows of our array, which had eight elements of four bytes each. So that sounds like 96 to me. Looks like we found it. Okay, so it looks like you're right about that one, but how do we do it properly? Don't worry, that's coming on the next slide too. So this is how you should do free with a 2D array. Freeing the memory the right way, follow the pointer. So we need our loop again. This time it's not for malloc, but it's for explicitly freeing each row at a time. And only when we freed all those rows can we free IPP, those 24 bytes which represent the three pointers to integers. So we need to do the rows first. Let's see how it works. We're gonna iterate from zero to dim one. So that's three, yeah, up to three, because we've got three elements here. So what do we do? So first we call free on IPP zero, I is zero, and that will free this row. Then we go around the loop again. Now I is one, we call free on IPP one, and now that memory is freed up. We go around the loop again, now I is two, and now we call free on IPP two. Now we've freed up those three rows. Now we can go here and free IPP and the memory is freed. And with that new version, we get no memory leak. All heat blocks were freed, no leaks are possible. So everything's good.